this time of year there's a lot of um, commencement speeches going on and so I sort of invited the YOU to be a part of um, that kind of thing but then they realized that they had like two zillion projects to do at this time of year graduating prom and a zillion senior projects and all kinds of things and they all kind of looked at me the ones i asked kind of cross-eyed and said well uh we'll do what we can so um so i decided the best thing to do was to include them a bit and then to give a sort of commencement address um, that i would like to give to the youth of our world to all of us sitting here, you know, just kind of the things you already know, but just little reminders of, of <laughs> <laughs> like on your phone, a little reminder that you might get now and then. <laughs> and really the main thing is love, contribution, and connection. You know, that you are loved, like infinitely loved, thoroughly loved, by that source, by this community, by the people in your life, exactly as you are, exactly as you are. There's nothing to fix, there's nothing to change, there's nothing to, you know, we're just, it, as, as we are, perfection, worth. And so don't compare yourself to others. Theodore Roosevelt said, or is most often attributed with having said, Comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, don't, don't let that rob your joy. Comparing yourself to others is a futile thing to do. You know, because we end up either inflating ourselves or deflating ourselves, which is just a game of ego anyway, right? And it's an impossibility because we are all a unique expression of the one. We all have a unique way of being and ability. And, and so it's not any more about making ourselves small or puffing ourselves up or comparing ourselves or comparing others to others, just letting everybody be as they are and lifting them up with the goodness that we see in each other. And that's really the, the last thing is to, to know that you are made of love, you know, that, that you are of this essence, that you are sourced by love, that it is all that you are. Brene Brown, who we've been following in this leadership series we've been doing for the last four weeks, wrote the book Dare to Lead, which is we're using as our guide. And in it, she talks about the thing that she thinks, that she says has been the most helpful thing in her relationships is, is the simple technique where she says, the story I'm telling myself is, and fills in the blanks. And so in a relationship, she might actually say that out loud. The story I'm telling myself is, I'm afraid you're gonna leave. The story I'm telling myself is, I don't think you love me anymore. The story I'm telling myself is, I'm not good enough. The story I'm telling myself is, I won't fit in anymore if I succeed. The story I'm telling myself is, I'm too much of this or too little of that. And so when we know that for ourselves, we can stop telling that story. <laughs> And when we share it with others, it really helps illuminate what's the truth of what's here, you know? So if we can have that kind of vulnerability with ourselves and with each other, it builds our, into the kind of story we really wanna be telling, right? The story we wanna tell ourselves is a story that we are courageous, the story that we are beautiful, the story that we are creative, the story that there are infinite possibilities available to us. The story is that if something isn't going well right now, that's just a temporary process and that we will move through it, we will prevail, we will find what it is in our hearts that is ours to be and to do in truth. And so we can start telling ourselves those stories, those those true stories and telling each other, telling our friends, telling our family members, telling the people we love or the strangers that we meet, the, the truth about them that we see in them because that's really leadership. Leadership is seeing in one another what is the truth and calling it out. You know, calling out the talents, the abilities, the divine qualities, the essence. And so that's the story we want to be telling because we want to be telling the story of how at one time we lost our way a little bit in this world and we found it by the power and the potency of true story and telling ourselves and each other that. And the second thing besides love is contribution, to know that you are so valued no matter what and you have a contribution to make. 
And so what is that contribution? Some of you probably already know. Some of you have no idea. Some of us spend a whole lifetime looking for what is our contribution. But all we really need to do is follow what makes our heart sing, right? Whatever makes our heart sing leads us to that place. It's that simple. Or whatever breaks your heart wide open, whatever issue or concern in the world breaks your heart open, follow the heartbreak, because the heartbreak will lead you to the thing that makes your heart sing. And don't do it all. If those among you who are idealists, don't try to do it all. That was me at 22. And I remember my friend Mary Ellen Messner and I, who was a bird of the same feather, and we got, I had just written this big research paper about Jane Addams, who is known as the founder of social work, and she was the first American woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize, and she did all kinds of amazing things in my hometown of Chicago. And, um, and so we found this place called the Jane Addams Conference, this organization, and Mary Ellen and I wrote this like 25 page proposal, and on every page there was a different world issue that we were gonna address. <laughs> I mean, you name it, AIDS, racism, poverty, homelessness, we were going to cover it all. You know, it was like that kind of, you know, desire and passion. And um, Anne, who worked there, who was the executive director, was sitting across her big desk and uh, she looked over at her little half reading glasses that I wear some like that now. And, <laughs> and uh, she said, it's quite ambitious. <laughs> We went home thinking maybe it was, it was a little bit overdone. <laughs> so I guess the point is just pick something, you know? The world needs you. The world needs your love. The world needs your joy. The world needs your passion. The world needs your whatever it is that lights you up or that breaks your heart. Just do it. Just step in. Just take a, take a movement toward that thing and doors will open. And where doors close, another door will open and you will always be shown the way to what is yours to be and do in the world. So don't worry about getting it right, just do something. <laughs> just follow that heartbeat. And tell the truth, you know, just tell the truth. It's so simple, just tell the truth, right? Yeah, all the antics we do to not tell the truth, all the reasons why we squirm around not saying the truth because we're scared of what the outcome will be. In the end, it's always better. Jesus told us the truth will set you free. It's always best when we tell the truth, when we tell the truth about how we're feeling, when we tell the truth about what we're needing, when we tell the truth about what we see in the world, when we call out what needs to be exposed and to, so that we can move toward that which we want to have happen, that which we want to manifest in the world. So just, it's so simple, just tell the truth, always. And stand for what you're for, not for what you're against. You know, we can spend a whole lot of time pushing rocks up hills, you know, and we try, believe it. All of us in this room are laughing because we've tried, and I know you have too in different ways, but the truth is the truth, right? That if we go as the river flows with the things that we want to manifest, with the good that we want to create in the world, things then flow for us. And we don't waste a bunch of time and energy and effort in, in trying to push against or resist that which we don't want. Tarana Burke, who's the founder of Girls for Gender Equity and the Me Too movement on uh, bringing sexual harassment out of the shadows, was interviewed recently by, well, I don't know how long ago, it was semi-recently, by Trevor Noah. And she was asked when Harvey Weinstein was being convicted in Hollywood for this mass ring of, social, or of sexual harassment or experience of all these women had been sexually harassed, and he was being convicted, and, and Trevor Noah asked her, are, are, does that make you feel happy? And she said, no. Does it bring me personal joy to see the mighty fall? No. She's like, that's not what this is about. This is about those who have been through this so that they can have healing, so that they can move on with their lives, so that we can end sexual violence once and for all. She's all about what she's for, not what she's against. 
there's no time for that. There's no energy for that. Why would we want to spend our time on that? Find the way of what we want. Don't spend time talking about how awful it is in the world. You know what you contribute to? How awful it is in the world. <laughs> Instead, just move the conversation to what would light you up? What would make you feel excited? What is it that you want to see? Move the, vision, move the conversation to vision, to possibility, to passion. And that gets the energy moving in the directions we want and creates the kind of world we all want to live in. Don't look for what's missing. Don't spend your time hunting down what is missing. Just be present to what is good, what is appreciative, what, can be, what we can be grateful for because in this moment then we praise and expand and bring abundance to that which works well. Again, wasting a lot of time and energy focusing on what we think is missing or hunting for what we think is missing. Don't bother. You know, Alan Alda, and he, do you all know, you probably guess, do you know what Alan Alda? Yeah. Lonnie does. <laughs> I figured Lonnie would. <laughs> I don't know if the YOU is too, but she was, he was an actor and, um, and he's known for MASH, yeah. You watch really old re ones if you can find him of MASH. But anyway, he's an actor and he said, you can't get there, you can't get there by bus, but only by hard work and risk, and this is the most important part as spiritual beings, by not quite knowing what you're doing. By not quite knowing what you're doing. You don't have to know where you're going or what you're doing. In fact, not quite knowing is just about right. You know, I kind of know, I kind of know I'm moving in this direction, but I don't really know exactly how it's going to unfold, or I don't really know what I'm walking into or what I'm saying yes to. That's that element of spiritual mystery that we always want to have with us. Mary Morrissey said that, that no successful person ever succeeded in the absence of fear. There will be fear because we don't know and we love certainty, don't we? We love to know that it's point A and then point B and point C and this is exactly where we're going and this is how we're gonna do it. A lot of us do anyway, not everybody does. <laughs> but a lot of us like that sort of sense of certainty but forget about it on the spiritual journey. It's not about certainty. The spiritual journey is about tuning in to what spirit gives us one step at a time. We don't get the whole revelation. We don't get to see the whole thing. If we're true to the, the power of following the spiritual path, then we just will get what needs to be revealed as it needs to be revealed, as each door needs to open for us. And then he said, Alan Alda, he continued with the same quote, that what you'll discover by doing this is something wonderful. What you'll discover is yourself. See, all roads keep leading back to that divine essence, that very essence of the truth of who we are. So knowing our source is really key, isn't it? Knowing our source is about listening for the wisdom and feeling in for the love. And that's really it. I know we make it all real complicated, but it really isn't that complicated, you know? A pause, a listening in, and we know by watching, by paying attention to the sensations in our bodies, by listening to the words that come, by, by the visuals that come. You know, everybody gets these things differently and every one of us gets them differently at different days and times, right? But if we're just willing to tune in and listen and follow, and then tune in and feel that infinite love that is available to you, always, always, always there. Yeah. In the first service during the meditation, I was, um, I have to admit, I started out the meditation still holding a problem that was, has been going on in my life. And, um, and I started to smell roses. And uh, I, I know that roses are symbolic of the Divine Mother, but you know, the, the practical part of me had to open my eye and look around, see if there was any roses around. <laughs> And, and so I noticed that during the meditation, because in the first service we have about a 10 minute silent meditation, and um, I noticed that I would start to make something of that, right? So, oh, how, what, how is, that, is that something I should be talking about today? You know, blah, 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 my, my mind started getting busy, right? And then it would go away. And then I would leave it alone, go back into the meditation, and it would come back. And so that presence of the Divine Mother 
that was such a gift this morning. We don't always get those gifts, but when we get them, we want to cherish them. And, and so that presence was just letting me know, you know, surrender, it's okay, it's all good. <laughs> it's all one, it's, all, it's taken care of. Give it over, give it over, give it, give it over. I know you all have had caregivers and parents who have had so much to teach you, for better, for worse, right? By example, by words, by actions, by what they do and don't do. Take the best of that, the very best of that, and just please leave the rest. Just leave the rest. Don't let it haunt you and follow you and chase you to all the therapy chairs around America, you know? <laughs> Really, truly, because this is it, you know? Mother, Father, God, right here. Essence of, of, of infinite source, right here. That's all we need. And the voice, the, the wisdom and the love and the truth of what your parents and caregivers have taught you, it's with you, it's embodied in you. You'll hear that voice at times when you go to do something. And you'll make the decision then if that's the action you want to take or that's not the action you want to take. But that embodied wisdom is with us and available to all of us all the time. I know you know these things. Again, I'm just sort of echoing the truths that you already know. So that's contribution. And then there's connection. And we've talked about connection to source. And then there's connection to community. You know, when we know about the connection to source, we know in truth, we know that we are never, ever alone. But sometimes we feel alone. The truth is sometimes as human beings, we feel alone. And so that's what community does for us. You know, the people here, over the years when you come back here, there'll be different faces. They won't necessarily be the same people. The person, people talking on the stage or the people doing the music will be different people. The people in the sound booth may be in the different people. It doesn't matter. Because what's here is a foundation of community that is here for you forever. It's a place of a touchstone of love and home. It's a place where if you fall or perceive that you have failed, you can come and you will be dusted off with compassion and lifted up in affirmative prayer. You will be reminded of the truth of who you are over and over again. So if you stray and if you feel like you have separated in some way, Come back. We'll come back anyway, of course. We want you no matter what. But what I really want you to know is no matter how long you go away, if you do go away, that this is always a place where you can come and be welcomed and loved and reminded of who you are. And even to think about it, even to, from a distance, bring YOU into your hearts. Bring all those kids from the rallies, all those that, that, you know, I remember the first uh, YOU rally I went to and I was just blown away. 14-year-old kids Sufi dancing with me, looking deep into my soul. 13-year-old boys who I had a different vision of what 13-year-old boys did. <laughs> Completely open and intimate, connecting. That world that you've touched in YOU that, that world that we live in in unity, it feels like a bubble sometimes. Burst the bubble and, and share it with the world. Because everybody is hungry for that. Everybody is starving for that kind of intimacy and connection you've spoken for, spoken about earlier. And just bring it. That's the vulnerability that we're talking about in this, this leadership work. That's the kind of vulnerability and courage that we bring into the world, to, to be willing to take a stand for what we truly believe and know about who we are, and to be that in the world. Wow, what you can do, that's contribution. So, you know, for the whole community, just, don't you feel proud? Don't you feel like, wow, look at, we, we helped Somehow, these amazing YOUers that are in front of us today, we helped contribute in some way. That this community is dedicated to uplifting youth from birth all the way to death, right? To remind all of us of the truth of who we are and where we've come from and to be able to connect with each other and with God in these deep ways that matter so much and that are needed so much. So thank you all for the ways that you've contributed. And I want to encourage all of us to hold all of our YOUers in prayer as they go off to do different ventures or maybe stay with us. 
and mentor youth, not only our YOUers, but any youth that you can find. Be available, and by mentorship, I don't mean tell them everything you know. I know I'm sort of doing that this morning, but that's kind of our setup here. <laughs> But I mean, just being there, you know, listening, just being a, a place of listening, a place of safety, a place of comfort and compassion and kindness and encouragement. Isn't that what we're all here for anyway? That's a contribution that we all make, a contribution grounded in love and connection. That's all we are. We're brave leaders. We're all together creating a brave new world. So let's just know that together. Let's say that together. Let's be that together. I am a brave leader co-creating a culture of divine love and truth. So it is. <laughs>